Welcome to the latest addition to the Compliance Podcast Network, the podcast 10 for 10, which brings you the week's top 10 compliance stories curated together in one podcast each week. Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, brings you the compliance professional stories you need to be aware of at the end of your busy week. Sit back and in 10 minutes, hear about the stories every compliance professional should be aware of. Every Saturday, 10 for 10 highlights the most important news, insights, and analysis for the compliance professional, all curated by the voice of compliance, Tom Fox. Get your weekly filling of compliance stories with 10 for 10. Hosted by Tom Fox. 10 for 10 is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from the sponsor of the Compliance Podcast Network for this month, Ethico. In the intricate world of ethics and compliance, each second is precious, and slow case closures are more than just delays, they're missed opportunities. Enter Ethico. Our solution revolutionizes case management, cutting closure times in half and turning every challenge into a chance for improvement. Imagine a workspace where efficiency and compliance coexist harmoniously. Don't just dream of faster resolutions, make it your reality. Visit ethico.com slash CPN today to book a demo and dive into our exclusive white paper by Tom Fox, the ROI of compliance, and to try our free ROI calculator. Empower your team with the tools they deserve. Welcome to 10 for 10 for the week ending June 15, 2024. Our first story is that comes to us from law.com, which reports that the court appointed examiner in the FTX bankruptcy case seeks to do additional investigation into Sullivan and Cromwell's pre-petition work for the fraudulent cryptocurrency exchange. The examiner previously reported he found no evidence that Sullivan and Cromwell was aware of the fraud. And the court is scheduled a July 17 hearing to determine whether three additional investigations will proceed. Uh, Next up from Bloomberg, a pretty sad story that the CFO of Tyson Foods, John R. Tyson, the great-grandson of the company's founder, was arrested on a drunk driving charge and suspended from his role as a CFO. He had previously been arrested for um, waking up or in falling asleep in someone's home and um, for public drunkenness, and um, he really needs some help. It's pretty clear that um, he's got a drinking problem, and I hope Tyson will stand behind him and get him the help he needs. Uh, For compliance professionals, uh, think about EAP and how that can be a system to help create trust within your organization. Uh, Next up, we had a pretty propitious week in the Bob Menendez trial. His former bribery colleague, Jose Uribe, took the stand and uh, detailed the bribery that he had uh, done to Senator Menendez or engaged in with Senator Menendez and his uh, wife. And CNN has summarized this with five key takeaways from this week's trial. So check that out to find out about Senator Menendez's trial. Next up from the New York Times, FAA Administrator Mike Whitaker testified before a Senate panel about changes that's been made to the FAA's oversight of Boeing, including more uh, direct inspections and less reliance on self-reporting by Boeing. It's going to be a long road to hoe for Boeing, having lost the trust of numerous stakeholders And perhaps at this point, most importantly, the FAA. The FAA is going to engage in much more robust oversight over Boeing, literally, because they have to do so. And from the Wall Street Journal Risk and Compliance Journal, Dylan Tokar reporting that the U.S. has added three Chinese companies to blacklist over forced labor allegations under the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. It includes companies uh, that are a seafood processor, a shoemaker, and an aluminum manufacturer. So forced labor is continuing in China, and the Uyghur Forced uh, Labor Prevention Act is certainly alive and well. Next up, the first of two stories from the Financial Times. 
This one that the former crypto or current crypto company, Terra Labs, will pay $4.5 billion to the SEC in the fraud case. The company was behind the collapse of the $40 billion collapse of Terra USD digital tokens in 2022. It's the uh, latest major cryptocurrency company to pay a hefty fine in the United States. The company and the chief uh, executive, Do Kwan, were found liable in New York in a civil case for arranging the fraud that cost billions. Our second story from the FT is about the loss of the rule of law in China. What happens uh, when you the rule of law goes away? Well, we're watching it play out in real time in China now, whether this is going to be a foreshadowing of what might happen under a second Trump administration. It's an open question, but the uh, on May 30, Hong Kong's court handed down a landmark judgment that uh, convicted 14 pro-democracy politicians of conspiracy to m- commit subversion against the state. Um, so the thought police really do exist, and they apparently exist in Hong Kong, and that may be the end of the rule of law in Hong Kong. Next up from the New York Times, the co- court-appointed monitor over the United Auto Workers, or UAW, is looking into allegations that two uh, by two union officials that they were punished and otherwise retaliated against for raising questions on financial matters. This investigation is on in or on rather the president of the UAW, Sean Fain. The monitor also accused the union of a lapse in cooperation in the investigation, saying it had taken months to turn over relevant documents to the monitor and then provided only a small fraction of those requested. Um, These assertions were made in a report uh, filed in federal court during the monitor's uh, tenure, and uh, the process um, will probably only get worse for the UAW. Next up from the OCCRP, which publishes some really interesting pieces, a very long-form article on the Israeli businessman Benny Steinmetz. Uh, You may remember him for the alleged BRG corruption in Guinea, but it turns out he's involved in a wide variety of other what can only be called as shady deals literally across the world. He was convicted by a Swiss court for the B. Uh, RG uh, corruption in Guinea, and um, he is currently living in Israel while his sentence in Switzerland is being appealed. But it turns out there were other countries where he had dipped his toe into the water. Uh, his approach was summed up by a statement he made to the Financial Times back in 2012. We invest in difficult places, and sometimes you have to get your hands dirty. Well, uh, these um, scandals involved him, involving him have now been uh, reported w- with great detail by the um, uh, OCCRP, and it makes for a really interesting read. And our final story comes to us from Bloomberg, and it is about the Canadian bank TD America, or TD <coughs> Toronto Dominion Bank, which of course has an American bank, or branch rather, and there are fresh allegations of money laundering in the United States. Uh, This is uh, stacked on top of prior allegations that the bank had lax AML controls, and now it's facing greater scrutiny here in the United States. The sponsor for the entire Compliance Podcast Network this month is Ethico. Have you ever wondered how to show the ROI of your compliance program? Have you struggled with the budgeting process, getting the funds you want for your compliance program? Well, I've partnered with Ethico to put together a white paper on the ROI of compliance, which shows you not only how to demonstrate ROI, but also how to speak finance when you're sitting across from the CFO with your budget proposals. Check out the website and get the white paper. 
Thanks so much for listening to this episode of 10 for 10. I hope you'll check out the newest podcast in the Compliance Podcast Network, the Compliance Tip of the Day. In Compliance Tip of the Day, I give a five to eight minute summary of one tip that you can uh, integrate into your compliance program or put together for greater compliance program efficiency.